Hello Isopod fans, it's Wally from Supreme Isopods bringing you another great edition of the Isopod Setup Review. This one's really special. This is featuring an Isopod we've never done before and one of those top of the line Isopods, Porcelio Hasi. So make sure that you stay tuned because this is going to be a good one. The Isopod Vlog Okay, before we even start, I've had a couple of questions about this shirt. This is from Aquaramax Pets from Ross. Thank you very much, Ross. And the questions are, what's on the bottom of the shirt? We see at the top, Aquaramax Pets, but what does it say at the bottom? And let me see if I can do this. Isopods do my dirty work. Look at all those cool isopods. Thanks again, Ross, for the shirt, and I hope that that answers your questions. I really like doing these setup reviews, and I hope that the people that I'm doing them for get some information out of it that really helps them keep their isopods better. If you have an isopod setup that you would like me to review, go ahead and send the video over to me at uh, Wally Kern on Facebook or Supreme Gecko on Facebook, and I'll do a review for you. Keep that video about one minute or so. Tell me about the setup. When did you get the isopods? How big of an enclosure is it? Talk about the ventilation, the substrate, the leaf litter, the wood, the moisture area, the drier area. Tell me what foods you're feeding, how long have you had the setup. And again, try to keep it around one minute or so. Send it to me and I'll do the review. So let's take a look at today's review. This is from Paul Duguay. And again, it's Porcelio Hasse. Let's start the video out. Hello, Wally. This is Paul Duguay. Today I'm showing you my Placilio Hasi setup. Basically, it's a six quart container with ventilation on the top and in the. Again, this is Porcelio Hasse. It's a more advanced isopod. And I want to take my time to go through this video and talk about the things that Paul is doing with the setup. I see some good things, I see a couple of things that he could improve on. And a very, very important note that I'll keep for the uh, back end for the very end of this video. So stay tuned for that. So at this point, we're taking a look at the uh, setup. It's a six quart, great ventilation. The tub size, a lot of people will say six quart is just too small for this isopod. I say exactly the opposite. I actually like to start off with a six quart enclosure. Keep them in there until you see some activity, some babies and then you can consider moving them, moving them into a 15 quart or bigger. The ventilation is perfect for these animals. You've got some cross ventilation holes in the sides, which is just great, and the top ventilation looks adequate, if not perfect. Let's keep going. Sides, I use a commercially grade isopod substrate. It has a mixture of hardwood and charcoal mixed within it. I also supplement that with hardwood sawdust. We're going to stop right there. The substrate sounds great. There's a lot of commercial breeders, commercial vendors that are providing substrates and the substrates are great. Remember the soil is not, the substrate is not flake soil. A flake soil is actually decayed wood. So whenever you see somebody using pellets like I have in the past, like I still do, or a sawdust or some kind of a mix like that, what that's doing is it's expanding the life of that substrate. But initially, it doesn't really help the isopods, and I think that that's maybe a misconception a lot of us in the isopod hobby have. If you really want to start off a good substrate like this for your isopods, find a vendor that has flake soil. And if you have a question about that, send me a PM on Facebook, and I can point you to a couple of vendors that do that. On top of that, I put pin oak leaves both full and mulched, which I mulch up in a coffee grinder. Let's stop right there. Because this is Porcelio Hase, I'm going to take my time and go through some of these points in a little bit more detail. The leaves that Paul is using, the oak leaves, just perfect. He's crushing them up. He's grinding them. I think that that helps the isopods a little bit, and it gives them smaller uh, food material. Now, they're going to find full leaves in the wild, and they're going to work with those. So it's a, a minor point, but for me, I guess I like to do that as well. Let's keep going. I have a corner of sphagnum moss, which I keep wet. 
since the Hasis tend to like an arid setup. Stopping right there, he's got the sphagnum moss. He has a moist area. He's keeping that under control. He has a large dry area in this isopod that I can see here. And we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later in the video. But so far, everything is just right on. Let's keep going. I also have both concave and flat bark. Uh, the Hossi themselves seem to like the flat bark better. Stop right there. So I've mentioned in other isopod setups that you really like to use a bark or some kind of a wood that's concaved and that's so that the isopods can get up off the ground, off the substrate. And Paul is saying that, uh, and he's picking up, I think he's calling this the flat piece, but if you notice, it has grooves in it. And I have a couple of pieces like this as well, and it, they work just perfect, especially I have um, Porcelio uh, spatulatus, and they love to get into those grooves off the ground. So this actually works just like a concave piece of wood where the isopods are getting up off the substrate. Works perfect. Let's keep going. As far as food goes, I feed them a number of foods, river shrimp, river minnows, supreme isopod chow, lapashi bug burger, powdered form, algae wafers, which I actually pulverize and crush. Stopping right there. These foods are wonderful. You, everything that you've mentioned so far is great. Uh, good variety of food, and I'll mention again. You know, isopods, the number one thing that they need is decaying wood and decaying leaves, especially decaying leaves. So you've provided that. You're supplementing with these other foods, and that's just absolutely perfect. You talk about the uh, spirulina wafers that you're crushing up and providing it as a powder. I'm going to provide a really cool tip here, and I'll throw the link in the description for this spirulina powder that I use in our facility for many different purposes. And it's, I'm sure, way cheaper and you don't have to crush it down. But this can that I'm going to provide or show a picture of right here is 62 cents an ounce. I'm sure that the wafers that you're buying right now, Paul, are probably around two or three dollars an ounce. So quite a bit of a uh, cost savings for you. Hopefully this will help. Let's keep going. Also, I use eggshells, which I also pulverize and crush for calcium. And a number of varieties of fish food. Now, I told you that I was doing some radical stuff, but because the video would run way too long if I told you about it, I'll have to save that for my next YouTube video. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. We're sitting at a minute and 36, so you've gone 30 seconds over, 36 seconds over your one minute time. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is an absolutely wonderful video. You've shown a lot of the elements of this isopod setup. Just perfect. I, I can't think of a different color that I would give you other than just absolutely green. This is prime for these uh, Porcelio Hase to do really, really well and to start breeding for you. You've got the right foods, you've got ventilation, you've got a dry area, and make sure that that dry area is at least maybe 75, 70 to 75 to 80 percent of the uh, enclosure. You've got the moist area with the substrate um, or with the sphagnum moss. The wood is perfect. The foods that you're feeding, absolutely great. You don't talk about misting. I'll mention this just real quick. This is very, very, very important, I feel. And I'm sure that you're doing this the correct way, Paul, but I don't like to mist the enclosure if I have a higher end animal like this, like one of the large uh, Spanish uh, Porcelio. What I'll do is I'll pour the water into the um, sphagnum moss on the edges and let that suffice for expanding the moist area or keeping the moist area moist. Otherwise, this is a great setup. I really can't think of any additions that I would do here or changes that I would do here. Looks great, Paul. Thanks for the submission. I really appreciate it. This is a great high-end animal that we were able to review, and I really appreciate that. Isopod fans, I hope you got a little bit out of this. This is just a great setup that hopefully you can use as well once you start working with one of the higher-end Porcelios. If you're already working with one, 
send me your uh, setup review and I'll take a look at it. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like, hit the subscribe if you haven't, hit notifications all so you don't miss another one of these videos. Again, thank you very much for watching.